LeBron James in the NBA dunk contest. Unfortunately, we didn't have a chance to hear this type of words during 20 years of his career. Was LeBron afraid to do it? Most likely, yes. Does he lack creativity in his dunks? For sure, yes. But today, we will not discuss what ifs. We will focus on that one and only dunk contest he competed in. What's up everybody, I'm Smooth and today we will watch and analyze McDonald's All-American dunk contest from 20 years ago. Event was held in Cleveland, Ohio. LeBron was MVP of the game with stats of 27, 7 and 7. We also had a chance to see Chris Paul and Kendrick Perkins on the court. Lowell Deng was in the roster, as well as Olu Famutimi, 2008 Ukrainian Super League dunk champion. Dunk competition didn't have a lot of big names in it, but still it was a pretty decent show. Let's meet the participants. Nduri Ebi from Houston, 18 years old, 6'9". Later will be drafted by Minnesota Timberwolves. He'll play only 19 games for them in a span of two seasons and then begin his journey to overseas basketball world. Vaughn Wafer from Cleveland, Texas. Will play in NBA for six years, averaging six points and one rebound a game. J.R. Giddens of Oklahoma City, 18 years old. In his 38 games NBA career, he will average only two points per game for Boston and New York. But he had a solid international career, playing in Poland, Spain, Italy, Argentina and other countries. Shannon Brown, Maywood, Illinois, 6'3", 17 years old. Two-time NBA champion with the LA Lakers in the future and one of the craziest high flyers in the league's history. Brittany Hunter, Columbus, Ohio. At that time, it was a very big deal to see a girl in the dunk contest, so crowd couldn't wait to see what Brittany has to offer. Charlie Villanueva, Blairstown, New Jersey. 6'10", 18 years old. He put Ndudi Abbey on a poster at McDonald's All-American game. We'll have a good NBA career playing for Toronto, Milwaukee, Detroit and Dallas. Travis Outlaw, Starkville, Mississippi, 6'9", 18 years old. Very good role player for Portland, Clippers, New Jersey and Sacramento. And last but not least, LeBron James from Akron, Ohio. Everybody was waiting to see him in a dunk contest. He was throwing ridiculous dunks in almost every game, hence people were expecting him to do something crazy, something that has never been done before. And yes, the guy spent most of his time in the NBA and he doesn't even think to stop yet. Let's meet the judges. Duan Wagner, Cleveland Cavaliers. In just a few months, LeBron will become his teammate. Carlos Boozer and Darius Miles, two young and promising Cavs players. Both of them dunked in an All-American competition before. Boozer in 99 and Miles in 2000. Michael Vick, NFL quarterback. Larry Nance, 1984 NBA dunk contest champion and NBA All-Star playing for Cleveland. Desagana Diop, also a future LeBron teammate. Helen Darling and Howard Garfinkel and Sonny Hill. Every participant will perform two dunks in the first round. Four best players will advance to the finals where they will need to do three more dunks each. You need to do all of your dunks in a row. You have one extra attempt for every dunk. Judges will score from 8 to 10. If you miss, you get a zero. No props and no help from the teammates. No surprise that LeBron was the main guy of the event. He was the only guy who was interviewed before the contest started. But let's wait and see what he can really do in a dunk contest setting. Ndudi Ebi will jump first. Classic reverse two-hander. Let's think it was a warm-up for him. All he needed to do is put the ball in the hole on his last and he would have won. My goodness, uh, there's huh? some serious ups there. <laughs> Second, basic two-hand dunk got way better crowd reaction. It's all about the amplitude of the dunk. He got it high and threw it down with force, which created an illusion of complexity of this dunk. But also, let's not forget that in 2003, crowd was not too picky about the dunks they see. 159 points for AB in the first round. Both dunks were made on the first try, but judges still need to save their tents for later. Especially those judges who was competing before themselves and who know how hard each dunk is. Von Wafer is second. Bonnie, he said I've got a little bit of Vince Carter and Dominique in my game. Pretty nice windmill of the bounce. Vaughn said that he has something from Vince Carter and Dominic Wilkins in his dunk, so we immediately start to compare him to the greats. 85 points for the first dunk. Pretty high if maximum score possible is 90. Oh, look at coming near us. One more windmill of the glass now met the back rim. You can miss one time. Vaughn has one more chance to make his dunk. Backboard, things like that. That's not easy. 
starting from the free throw line. Vaughn does a windmill off the glass, pushing through the front rim. Judges will lower the score a bit because of the first miss. But I want to take a second to say that I prefer off the glass windmills over any other type of windmills if they were made with the power and style. 175 points for Wafer in the first round. Third competitor, J.R. Giddens. Beautiful start. East Bay was still a very good dunk back in 2003. Chris Paul can confirm that. Giddens favorite dunker is Kobe Bryant. Kobe's East Bay helped him to get a trophy in the NBA dunk contest in 97. All tense. 90 points for his first dunk. See what he does here. Now I know who's gonna like that. Larry Nance. Larry Nance. Rock the Cradle. One of the classic dunks. Broadcasters think that Larry Nance will definitely like it. Maybe not the best swing, not the best style, but still this dunk is a very nice for a high school dunk contest. 177 total first round points let JR comfortably take first place in the rankings now. Shannon Brown's turn. I think you're gonna notice him a little bit like a former Spartan Jason Richardson. Ooh, nice, one hand. 180 one hand, jumping off two feet. I'm used to see Brown jumping more of uh, one, so it was kinda unusual to see this type of dunk from him. 77 points. Judges weren't impressed either. Well, they thought about this one for a long time, didn't they? Oh. 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 Man! Windmill, palming the ball. Not so many people in the world could replicate this dunk. Maybe Kawhi Leonard or Julius Serving. Windmill wasn't full because he didn't bring the ball up in the beginning, but here we have a different focus. Focus on literally windmilling with only one hand. And now it's enough to impress the judges and the crowd. 165 first round points for Brown. Brittany Hunter had a chance to break the news, like Candace Parker will do next year in 04, but unfortunately she didn't see nothing else than the back of that rim. Charlie Villanueva takes the ball. Guy right here that has a game plan. Second try and simple one hand dunk off the glass. It's a simple dunk today, 20 years or even 50 years ago. You need to put some crazy style on it to earn a good score on that type of dunk. But somehow we still don't see aids from the judges. It's funny that before the contest Charlie was saying that people can expect windmills Vince Carter style, East Bay's like J.R. Ryder and double pumps like Tracy McGrady from him. But at the end we get basic dunk which can be made by anyone standing 6'3 or taller. 81 points. It was eye level at the iron. Ooh, there's your windmill. Full baseline windmill. Okay, now I don't have nothing to say. The same windmill Jason Richardson will start with in 2004. 163 total first round points for Villanueva. LeBron took off his warm up short and crowd already started to make noise as like they saw Michael Jackson on the court. Expectations are very high. Can James not disappoint them? That's gonna take a long run up. One. Two hander off the backboard had a rim level. Commentators are trying to build the hype, saying that James jumping higher than Vince Carter, but I still don't understand why judges gave this dunk 88 of 90 points. Obviously, really simple dunk for James, and we cannot say it was crazy spectacular. Maybe second one will be better. Ridiculous athlete. Yes, it is better, but how can you plan your performance in the way where you put two almost identical dunks in a row? Okay, this one was very cool, eyes at rim level, plus really strong one hand finish. It is possible to give high scores here when you think about year of the event and also all the hype around LeBron. But I would love to see this dunk as the first one and second could have been a little bit more complicated. But maybe LeBron predicted everything right. He's basically at home, so he has the support anyways. And he was right. 176 total points give him second place in the first round. Travis Outlaw did not jump, so we already have four finalists. J.R. Giddens, LeBron, Von Wafer and Shannon Brown. I just want to take a second to ask you to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the videos. Brown will open up the final round. Guys will do three dunks each. In the three-point contest as well. First windmill attempt was really good, but ball flew all the way to the other half of the basketball court. No zeros yet, because dunkers have two attempts to complete the dunk. I think he was standing over 30 foot five. Here we go. 
very interesting decision. Shannon switched from right-handed windmill of 2 feet to left-hand windmill of 1, but it turned out even worse. Front rim, and Shannon gets zeros. But he still has two more dunks, even though the future of the contest doesn't look really bright for him now. Brown wants to start from the other part of the gym, which usually means that player plans to do a free throw line dunk. As much a tribute dunk as anything, he's got to see if he can nail it. Oh, that will work. That will work. I'm not really sure if it was necessary to run out straight from the locker room to make a 360 one-hander 8 feet away from the basket, but everybody loved it and crown went crazy. Judges are super happy, like it's the best dunk they've seen in their lives. But to be honest, it is indeed the best dunk of the contest so far. Great jump and classic 360 one-hander Terrence Stansbury style. All tense, of course. That's what LeBron James did too. Oh, he switched with the left hand, that was nice. Third dunk is a simple transfer from right hand to left hand. Shannon will do the same in the NBA a few years later. From my personal experience, I can say that this dunk feels really interesting when you're doing it in the dunk session, but I've never thought of using it in the real competition, even in the 2000s. Scores are not too high here, 77 points. But let's not forget his first miss, so his chances to win it all are very slim. Second finalist is Von Wafer. So he's time to go home and take a nap. <laughs> Now it's a dunk, 180 reverse windmill, but crowd was very quiet. They prefer high jumps and powerful finishes. Judges, even though they definitely understand the technicality, gave only 79 points. Wafer goes to the other baseline, what makes us expect another long jump attempt. Uh, the smartest thing he did though, he did the conservative and now he's bringing... Oh! It's hard to tell why he needed such a long run up for an East Bay attempt. Analyzing his first miss, I think he will not try this dunk second time in a row. Long pondering here, let's see what he's got. Oh yeah, that works. But I was wrong. Now Vaughn needed only two steps from the baseline to make a East Bay. And he can easily argue about who had the best dunk of the day, him or Brown. Really close to the perfect score, 88. See what he can come up with here. The timing's gotta be impeccable. Took his shirt off. <laughs> Wafer tried to do a classic trick with a t-shirt, but he messed up a pass a little bit, so the chance to surprise the crowd was wasted. Enjoyment watching this and performing it. Didn't get it high enough, what's it can do? Oh! He missed a one-hander of a lob, which is a bit weird after successful between the legs prior to that. First t-shirt attempt was not a real attempt, that's why he still has a chance to collect some points. Here's Wafer, last chance. Nice. Nice in-game one-hand dunk outside the paint. It's hard to score it high in a dunk contest. Probably you should give as minimum as possible in this case. Judges were generous and also gave Wafer some ninths. 246 total final points. He did not miss, so he still has a chance to win the whole competition. LeBron was asked if he has a plan for the final round. James said that he's one of those guys who just jump and then in the air making something happen. Probably it means that he doesn't have a real plan. James is ready to make his first dunk with the in the club by 50 cent playing in the background. This part of the country, look out. Rock the cradle, two hands. Not bad. LeBron did it with power and two-hander finish looks even better in this case. I personally have never been a big fan of two-hand cradle dunks, but MJ's technique always amazed me. 84 points for Bron. He's an elite company. Golly, his head, his chin almost got the rim. <laughs> Windmill with two hands. Crowd doesn't know how to react. They expected something else from a guy who was East Bane in real games. By the way, LeBron took off almost from the same spot as Shannon Brown did, but he didn't run all 94 feet to do it. 83 points for his second dunk. Let's get ready for the best moment of that event. I don't understand why ESPN and all the other media outlets don't use this trick shot very often. They always find something to post about LeBron, but never post this lob turned into a shot. At least it was better than the dunk James did afterwards. It's really hard to complete it. Well, if you do nail it, God bless you. Look out. Man, he had to wait for it. What's up with that? Super simple dunk. Two-hander reverse of the lap. 
Also, it's safe to say that LeBron doesn't jump that high of 2 as he does of 1. We can easily see the difference between his windmill headed rim level and this reverse dunk. Again, 83 points. James put on a decent show in the final round. Nothing crazy, but he made his 3 dunks with power and confidence. I personally don't think it was enough for a guy with that type of hype around him. Next, Michael Jordan needs to give an MJ type of performance. JR Giddens has a good chance to earn more points and finish as a winner. Actually has a broken fifth metatarsal on his left foot. Really nice tomahawk attempt. Judges will definitely like it. If you can hold on to it, that was a good looking attempt. Ooh, you know what? Here's a case. He's gonna stay with the same one. Gidden says he is not ready to continue because he had a foot injury at the time. Limping JR goes off the court and turns out that we already have a winner. LeBron James becomes a 2003 McDonald's All-American Slam Dunk Champion. He was asked if it was tough to perform in front of the crowd which expects you to jump over the backward and do crazy dunks. James gave a standard answer about good competition, but later he admitted that probably the home crowd and home judges helped him in that contest. And we definitely understand it. If you are LeBron heading into an NBA draft, everybody will try to help you win. But at the end, James did his job. His competition just wasn't good enough. Also, it's a great example of what we could see if LeBron competed in the NBA dunk contest. All those warm-up clips don't mean nothing unless you do it in front of uh, real judges who know how to score dunks. LeBron's dunk bag is not big enough to easily win the contest. Maybe in 2010 where he preliminary put his name on and then withdrew. Shannon Brown was jumping in 2010, so it would have been a nice story if LeBron was there. But it didn't happen because James didn't want to hurt his reputation in case of a loss. In my eyes, that's the trophy he's missing. Kobe and MJ both have it by the way. It's safe to say that it was a mediocre dunk contest, even with LeBron in it. His son Bronny, 20 years later, also competed in the same contest, but could not win unfortunately. Well, can't wait to see this duo in uh, Lakers next season. Just to make it clear, I'm a big LeBron fan. I just cannot believe that he didn't give me a chance to watch him in the NBA dunk contest. And uh, he didn't say no from the beginning. He continued to say that he's thinking about doing it and just never did it. I personally think it would be great to collect all the trophies in the league. And uh, he didn't have a problem with competing in a skills challenge, by the way. But anyways, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, hit the like button, subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.